Hi guys, it is a stormy rainy day here in the end times on Thursday morning, March 3rd, 2016 here in Paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands. So I'm hiding out in civilization, the little dog and I. So anyway, Thursday is when I don't have my prescribed rant. This is kind of my flotsam and jetsam day. So this week I decided to spend Thursday to doing what I do occasionally for the five or six people on planet Earth who give a shit. This is my African meltdown roundup rant, especially my sub-Saharan African meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media just to see how sub-Saharan Africa is setting the stage for the rest of the planet as sub-Saharan Africa spiraling into collapse, to social collapse, uh, of course, environmental and ecological collapse. And I'm not even going to talk about the drought. I cover that in my climate change meltdown roundup rants about the, the millions of people uh, facing starvation from drought and all of that. And so I'm just picked out, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories from today's mainstream media. Uh, several versions. Of, of this story here. This is Reuters spin on it. <clears throat> UN official says at least 50,000 dead in South Sudan war. At least 50,000 people have been killed in South Sudan's two-year civil war, a senior United Nations official said on Wednesday. A five-fold increase and the death toll given by humanitarian agencies you know, fairly recently. Uh, so this is this UN senior official, I guess, uh, oh, uh, who spoke on condition of anonymity in front of a small group of reporters, I bet. <clears throat> Quoting this UN guy who doesn't care to go on the record. 50,000 killed, maybe more, 2.2 million refugees and displaced, famine coming and looming in just a few months. Yes, the United Nations said South Sudan's warring parties are killing, abducting, and displacing civilians and destroying property. <clears throat> Where are we on the implementation of the peace agreement? Agreement. Nowhere we see violence spreading along ethnic lines, blah, blah, blah. And of course, there out of the six comments on the planet to that story, one of them was Hambo Littletail saying 50,000 is a good start. It is a good start. 50,000 people killed in South Sudan, but it is not nearly enough because we find this story from the French News Service and all of these stories about the humanitarian conflict in South Sudan we have this one, this one story buried away, alarming rise in South Sudan wildlife slaughter. For, any of the, for anybody who does not understand this, let the French news service spell it out for you. All sides in South Sudan's civil war. All sides. <clears throat> in South Sudan civil war <coughs> have slaughtered wildlife including elephants, giraffes, antelopes. Conservationists said Thursday warning that huge efforts must be made 
to protect the surviving animal populations. And this is true from South Sudan to the Congo to Nigeria as the real slaughter going on in Sub-Saharan Africa is not the slaughter and the humanitarian crisis. It is the slaughter and the wildlife crisis as every goddamn sub-Saharan African on all sides of every one of these conflicts. As the population of sub-Saharan Africa spirals out of control, which is the root cause of every single one of these problems in Africa. That and the planet eaters moving in as the, as the twin heads of that snake. You will not see the word overpopulation, I don't think, anywhere in this article or any article on the mainstream media about the collapse of Sub-Saharan Africa. You will not see the word overpopulation mentioned. In a report released on World Wildlife Day, this is World Wildlife Day, <clears throat> conservationists said gunmen had devastated one of Africa's largest animal migrations, yet another victim of an on ongoing civil war marked by atrocities in which tens of thousands of people have been killed. And anybody who does not understand this, and it's not pointed out, this civil war is an oil war between Sudan and South Sudan with, the, with China and the United States behind it all. A classic example of the global corporatocracy using economic hitmen, jackals, the military, whatever, to keep the oil war going. Okay. The U.S.-based Wildlife Conservation Society warned of, quote, an alarming expansion of illegal exploitation and trafficking, trafficking. It said there had been a sharp rise in recent months of commercial bushmeat poaching of antelopes, elephant killings, ivory smuggling, logging of trees, charcoal production, and gold mining damaging formerly pristine forest. Uh, elephants have been slaughtered for their tusks, while giraffes and antelopes have been mowed down with machine guns for bushmeat to feed the tens of thousands of soldiers and rebels battling each other. Do you get it? And then they go into the, there is still hope. Yeah, still hope. Uh, yes, uh, the report comes one day after the UN warned that the country's humanitarian crisis is also worsening, with the warring sides dragging their feet. You think so? Uh, Previously, animals and people have survived in this marshy area now, but now they have these tanks that can even move in to have amphibious tanks to enter previously isolated swamp zones. Good God, and we see soldiers arrested for poaching. Well, well no shit, Sherlock. No shit, Sherlock, that who do you think is doing the poaching? It's the ones with the guns. 
Jesus. Uh, new, newest report fears that hundreds of elephants uh, have been caused. Oh, now here, here's the, the ray of hope. The survival of South Sudan's wildlife was, one at, was once at one time a rare cause for hope in a land left in ruins. Yes, uh, of course the conservationists can't even uh, get in there to take a a accurate counts uh, because aircraft, uh, you know, checking in on the wildlife being shot down. Uh, good God. Yes, uh, anyway, this goes on and on. So that's South Sudan. Let's go from South Sudan to Nigeria. Several stories on this one uh, going around. This is AP's version. Nigerians sue Shell in British court for oil spill contamination in Nigeria, of course, Shell blowing the whistle on this because they will obviously uh, Shell wants the, the these court cases to be tried in Nigeria. Anybody who does not understand how so much of what is going on in Sub-Saharan Africa is oil wars. This is uh, Nigeria. <clears throat> Tens of thousands of Nigerian fishermen and farmers are suing multinational oil giant Shell in two new lawsuits filed Wednesday in a British high court alleging that decades of uncleaned oil spills have destroyed their lives. So uh, I guess they're suing for $83.5 million in damages after Shell offered them $50,000. $50,000. Uh, Shell said it will challenge the jurisdiction of uh, the British court. This is this one tribe, the Ogoni are among the most traumatized of millions of Nigerians suffering oil pollution going all the way back to the 1950s on a level that human rights activists say would never be allowed in the home countries of the multinational corporations that operate in joint partnerships with the Nigerian government. Do you get it? The Nigerian government in the pocket uh, of Shell. Peaceful protests in the, 1990, in the 1990s were attacked by Nigerian troops in, under, uh, under orders from Shell Oil who turned uh, the oil producing country into a war zone. Uh, this activist, uh, Ken Sarawiwa, and eight other indigenous leaders were executed by a military government, uh, pretty much uh, under the direct orders uh, of Shell Oil. Uh, you, you can believe on one level. Typically, victims of oil pollution spend years battling uh, the Nigerian court system, which widely criticized by rights groups as corrupt, only to come away with a pittance, so lawyers decided to challenge Shell at its London headquarters. We'll see where that goes. And so while that is going on in Nigeria, gee, let's go over a little to the east, and we see... Uganda, Uganda and Tanzania planning an oil pipeline. 
Uganda and Tanzania are, plan are planning to build a pipeline from Ugandan oil fields to the Tanzanian coast in a move that could strike a blow to Kenyan pipeline plans. This is uh, France's Total, one of the oil firms developing Uganda's fields, raised security concerns about the Kenyan route. Oh, Jesus. So the two countries are planning to build an oil pipeline, I don't know, what's this, about 750 mile long. And of course Tanzania also has large offshore natural gas reserves. Oh Jesus, this is two more countries. Uh, in the pocket of the oil industries. Yep, so let's go over there from oil all over. Let's go over there to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Green groups urge Democratic Republic of the Congo to keep its forest moratorium, a, a Congolese forest moratorium. A coalition of environmental campaign groups on Wednesday urged the Democratic Republic of Congo to maintain its moratorium on new logging licenses to protect its tropical rainforest. Campaigners warning that an area of rainforest twice the size of France is at risk of being mowed down if Congo goes ahead with its plans to lift the ban on new logging licenses. Yes, uh, Environ Congo's environment minister, Robert Bopolo, recently announced that steps are being taken to lift the moratorium. Uh, quote, it is on our agenda. Do you think so? Uh, this is one of these tree huggers from Norway at a time when the global community is working together to protect the world's last rainforest, a vital defense against climate change. The DR Congo government seems to be undermining the commitment to reduce emissions that it presented in Paris. Do you think so? Uh, the aim of the moratorium was to bring order to the logging sector to cut down on the illegal logging uh, in the country. Uh, a, a, illegal logging is a major problem in many developing countries, including the Congo, where poverty and decades have, of instability have put enormous pressure on natural resources, five times the size of France, DR Congo is home to more than 60% of the dense forests of the Congo Basin, the world's second largest tropical rainforest after the Amazon. Yeah, so let's go from, let's door from the Congo to Central African Republic, where we see hunger soars in Central African Republic as nearly two and a half million people face food shortages. Half the population of the Central African Republic 
are going hungry every day now. Double the number from one year ago, UN officials said as they called for more help to prevent the dire food situation deteriorating further. Three years of bloodshed and the displacement of nearly one million people from their homes has disrupted harvest and sent food prices soaring in the volatile country. Blah, blah, blah. You know, how many times ha have we heard this story? Never once do we see the word overpopulation showing up in this story. D, 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 D. Let's go over there to the coast of Kenya as we see sea turtles are key as Kenya balances ecology and development. Oh yeah. Balancing ecology and development. Kenya trying to strike a balance between its 330 miles of coastline for a billion dollar tourism industry and preserving the environment that attracts those visitors. Kenya's record is mixed in protecting endangered uh, tur turtles, I bet. So this is looking in on one of these developments. Uh, one, of, one of several sore spots for conservations and locals, not to mention the turtles, is the hotel of former Renault F1 tycoon Flavio Briatore. The dispute concerns around Briatore's billionaire resort. I think this is the official name of this. Briatore's billionaire resort on Milande Beach. Uh, the resort, this is Milande resident David Kirk, said the resort has been, quote, an absolute environmental disaster in which forests full of nesting birds were destroyed and the seawall had stopped turtles from coming ashore to lay their eggs. Resort General Manager Stephanie Ravensud said you know, that their billionaire resort was following all government requirements, and I bet that it was, and respects the environment. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's shit. And so it is no surprise that when you read the survey of the 15 cities with the lowest quality of life in the world, 11 of the 15 cities with the lowest quality of life in the world in sub-Saharan Africa, one in northern, uh, above the Sahara in Africa, and one of course in Haiti, which I call extreme West Africa. If you want to see a little slice of sub-Saharan Africa a few miles from me here in Paragraph. Okay, so uh, to, to put uh, 11 of the 15 worst cities on the planet in sub-Saharan Africa, the following factors taken into consideration. Housing, climate, physical conditions, pollution, disease, sanitation, 
medical facilities, education facilities, infrastructure, political violence and repression, political and social environment, crime, communications, cultural and recreation facilities, availability of goods and services. So other than Baghdad, Iraq, Sana, Yemen, and Damascus, Syria, uh, the other 12, well, then we have hey, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Uh, we have Tripoli, Libya, which is still in Africa. And the other 11, the other 11 in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, no shit, Sherlock, Bangui, Central African Republic, uh, adding that list, and, and not making the list, would be Lagos, Nigeria. I'm assuming Lagos, Nigeria, which I think was at last count 28 million people in rising, uh, must have been number 16 on the list. But anyway, since I understand that I am talking to myself in my Africa Roundup rant, uh, I will wrap it up and uh, I got me a real stove here, it looks like, today. And I'm getting hungry. Me and the little dog are getting hungry. So, bye guys.